Hi, I'm Shona from the education team at Geosat Australia. Have you ever felt an earthquake? Today we're going to find out about earthquake detection and monitoring at the National Earthquake Alert Centre here in Canberra. I have with me Steve, he's one of the seismologists that work here, that's an earthquake scientist, and he's part of the team that's on duty here every day of the year. Steve, how are you? Welcome Shona and welcome everybody to the NEAC. Now Steve, can you tell us first of all how we scientifically detect earthquakes? Well Shona, we need an instrument called a seismometer, which is a, a, a machine that's sensitive to ground shaking. And we've got one here with its cover taken off and we can see this little weight, and we can even hear it, that rattles within the casing. So this seismometer with that weight is capable of measuring shaking of the ground in a vertical direction. But there are more complicated seismometers like this one which we can't open up, which can measure shaking vertically and also shaking horizontally. And how many of these instruments are you receiving information from in this centre? Uh, there, there are hundreds of these around the world and across Australia that are sending information to us in real time and we're able to display that and analyse it here at the centre. Let's imagine that you're on duty right now and an earthquake event is taking place. What's the first hint that you get? Well, it'll come from our waveforms, which are on the screens behind us, and we'll just see uh, a slightly larger uh, wiggle arrive and then a slightly larger wiggle arrive at some other stations or some other instruments nearby. And each of these lines, which look quite wiggly, is information from one of these instruments in the locations that were on the map that showed the network for the country and for around the world. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. And it looks pretty crazy up there at the moment. There's lots of wiggliness going on. Is that all earthquake? Uh, it's not all earthquake. Some of it's noise from various sources. Noise from weather, from wave action, even human activity. But in this particular screen behind us, there's actually a small earthquake that, that uh, is uh, from the Taiwan area. Ah, oh, so that's this over here. Yes, yes. So those red lines uh, are marking the automatic detection of the arrival of the first earthquake. I can see next to the red lines there's a, a red P. What does that stand for? Yeah, the red P just codes for the primary wave. Now that's the fastest travelling earthquake wave and therefore the first to arrive. And if we look at a detailed view of an earthquake, the primary waves are the first ones that appear and then they're not necessarily the largest, are they? No, no. Following the P waves are a slightly slower moving S wave. And that's secondary? Secondary. And is that the end of the earthquake? No, no. If the earthquake's shallow and large, we can even get what are called surface waves and these are the ones that produce quite large ground motion. And that's the idea that literally the ground can roll. Yes, so it will roll in that sense and it will roll in that sense. And these are the large movements that will often create the damage in a large earthquake. So Steve, what do you do next in terms of analysing an earthquake? Well, Shona, we have a close look at those waveforms and those automatic P arrivals and we just manually adjust them to a point where we think they're exactly at the time that earthquake energy has arrived. And we're doing that for all the stations that are sending us their information and there might be some in there we need to reject, but basically we're looking at the real earthquake signature. So when you've detected a real earthquake, what are the things that we can measure about it? Okay, Shona, the, um, the analysis will tell us the time that the earthquake occurred, the latitude and longitude, the depth, and then following that information, we can determine the size or magnitude. And magnitude is about energy of an earthquake. And we know that the larger numbers that we might hear about on the news mean a more energetic, possibly a more damaging earthquake. That's correct. And, and where does that get published? We publish the information on the Geoscience Australia Earthquakes webpage. Thanks so much for your time today, Steve. It's been really great to learn more about the National Earthquake Alert Centre and your work here. So, if you want to know about earthquakes in Australia and around the world, visit our webpage, have a look at the earthquakes page and the other hazards information that's there.